Uh, here's the design, and I think you will find it all easier to work upside down. Don't worry if your colours are not exactly the same. The main thing is to get some sort of variation in them. Not really that crucial. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a fairly cool green. Just, just make sure you have a green that you like the look of, not that happy. If you want to cool it down, you've got a jaded one, just add a little bit, we'll say, add a bit of alizarin or even a little bit of purple, and that will cool your colours down. Right, so I've got a quite a, just a medium sort of green, and I've just added a little bit of purple mine. It may not be exactly the same colour as this one. I think it will be interesting for you to see what variations are. So don't don't panic too much about your, your exact shade of green. So we're going to start at the top and then work down towards us. So I'm going to so say, so when I did it originally, I pressed down hard. And then as I getting down towards the bottom of my leaf, I start to lift my brush up. So I press down hard. And as I start to get near to the bottom of the leaf is, I start to lighten my pressure. So I'm barely touching the surface. And that's how I can get a good edge. So I'm pulling this down. And now I'm going to go up in to next door. So again, now I can push down hard. And then I can just, with my tip, just pull it up. So I'm filling in the shape because it's a tracing that we're following. But as I say, as I explained to you, you don't actually have to do this in reality. And then because I need to make this thinner, I now need to make sure that I have a light touch and I just drag this down. So I'm barely touching the surface. It's a very light touch so that I get the stem coming down. So now I'm going to go off to the other side and I'm going to push down hard, fill in the shape, filling our tracing shape that we've got doesn't matter too much the main thing is you don't have to follow the you know if, you, if your leaf shape is slightly different to the tracing don't worry the main thing is to get a nice shaped leaf so if it's slightly bigger slightly smaller do not worry so i'm just pulling down to the center just filling in the shape So what I'm doing now is just pulling that down towards the center. And again, I've got another stem, just like that. Okay. So let's do another dark one. So it's the dark ones that I'm doing first. So this one's a dark one on my original design. So I'm just pressing down hard. And then I lift my brush up so it's barely touching the surface in order to get a point. Press down hard and then lift the brush up so that I can get a point. And then I just fill it in. So it's a very light touch now and I'm just very lightly going around the edge to make sure I get a nice loop shape. Loop shape. And then I might change the colour ever so slightly and pull it out this way. Again, press down hard and then where you want the edge to get nice and sharp. And I just pull it round. Can I get a point if I want? And then what do we do? Oh, we probably need some dark ones in the center. Again, I'm just going to change my color green a little bit. Okay, but at the moment we're doing fairly, fairly strong colors. So we've got a scattering over here. So we definitely need to pull in some dark ones down here. Okay, so there's this one's a dark one. So I press down hard 
And then I'll start to lift up. I'll pull the cup because I've got my work at a slight tilt. Okay, I can pull the colour down towards me and just tease it down. So I get the nice shapes that I want. And then, oh yeah, I'll probably put one there. Just give it a little flick. That'll do. And then I think there's another one. Yeah, there's another one there. I'll just give that a little flick. And that, put it down again. And then what we've got, oh, let's have this one. I just press down hard, lifting up. So that I get the shape that I want. And then I just tease it. Just to make sure I get the shape that I want. There we go. So if you find you've got too much um, paint, so I've now rinsed my brush out and, and dried it on a bit of a clean flannel, or as I say, you could use kitchen wear. If you think there's a bit too much colour in there, look, you can just just very very lightly touch it and I've pulled some of the excess paint off so now I think I'll probably do another one over here and then I might change colour again I'm going to have to start to lift the colours in a little bit I'm pressing down hard and then I'm just filling in the shape Might do another one over here. And then we'll probably might come back and do some more in a minute. So I think I'm going to change my colour a little bit. I'm now beginning to lighten mine a smidge. So I'm picking up a bit of lemon yellow. I don't get too citrusy though, so I might just add a little bit of purple. If that goes too grey, yeah, it's going to be a little bit too grey. So I'm just going to call it off slightly with a little bit of whimsically a green shade. I think that might make a nicer colour. So I'm sort of getting a, a dirty colour, but it's still quite yellowy looking. Okay, so I'm just making it a little bit more citrusy looking. Entirely up to you though. It doesn't it doesn't really matter too much. The main thing is to is to have some variations in the colour of the green. I'm also going to go um, a little bit more diluted as well with this one and let's just see what it looks like as long as there's a nice difference the main thing is to have a different color really different color looking leaves that catches the eye which this does it does look like a completely different green which is what we want so i'm just going to start to pull the shapes down and fill them in. Again, if you've got in these blobs like this, Rinse out your brush, dab it on a bit of kitchen paper and just pull it, pull it back so that you have any darkness going down to the, the base of the leaf. There we are, and the, the colours are working quite well together. Okay, so that's, that's the main thing that you want, to make sure that the colours look nice together. There can be any variation that you like and just have as many different variations of green as you want.
I might have a little one a little bit more here actually. If you look at the real mistletoe berries, they actually have a, a very slight cold olivey hint to them. So you notice I haven't actually filled the stems in very much That's because I haven't drawn in my berries yet. And I did actually do that last. It's almost a case of joining them up because sometimes you might go over the edges in by accident. I just realized I've missed a leaf there. And now that that is drying, I'm now going to turn my work up the right way. So now I'm going to get hold of my trusted pen, actually. Look, let's see if it's fine enough. So I've got my black pen. And I'm just going to go around my berries very lightly. I'm trying to be very light pressure and don't worry if you don't try and do a solid line I think it can be quite helpful just to leave a bit of a bat I'm trying to do very light pressure as possible and then I'm just going to do a little dot on the edge because the mistletoe berries have a little a little dot on the end. And I've got a few here, so I'm going to need to go over my pencil mark a bit because I can't see where I've done it. If you're not sure and you can't see, but I've got my 2H here. So I think, right, I think on my tracing, I've got one, one around here. And then we've got, maybe we've got, we've got another one around here. Uh, yeah, so we've got some around here. So that's that's got one there and one there, and then I've got probably put one here. And then we've got a line. So now I can see. where I want my twigs to go and I can strengthen up 
where I want some lines to go. That one, let's put that one up there. Oh, yeah, oh, that one needs a stick there. So we've got that one going there, that one going there. Yeah, we've got one there. Oh, let's, we've got a gap there, so we could like, let's put another. Ah, yes, I think my leaf's a bit small, so what I might do is put another berry in there, just because there's room. And then we've got... Now we can start to pull this up to the centre and we can start to look at pulling all these bits up and doing the bow. There's a line going there, and then there's a wavy line going there, and then we've just got random stems going up there. There we go. Right, so that helps me to see a bit better. So I can just fill in those. I'm going to go down to a small brush now just to fill in a few stems. We just want to make, just to show that they're all connected. I might put a little line in there and another line like that. And then we need to have these lines going in. And we can strengthen these up in a minute, but the main thing is to start to have lots of little twiggy bits going up and then just flicking out the top. So change the colour of your green for the stems at the top. At the moment, look, you know, have a light one, have a mid and have a dark one so it's all connected and you can just sort it all out. I'm now going back to my pen, the same pen that I used for the, the bush just to add a few more little bubble shapes, berry shapes, mistletoe berry shapes. And as I say, they have a little, if you look at mistletoe berries, you'll see there's always a little black dot on the end. There we go. And so when I was um, drawing this design, I just did a random, a random scattering of berries just to try and sort of work out the placement of them. It was completely made up. Um, so now that we've done that, and obviously you can spend more time if you want to um, sorting that out. What we're going to do now is make fill in the berries. Uh, we're going to they're going to need to be cold. So, and you want to have it contaminated water. So if you've got a sort of turquoisey blue color, and I'm going to dilute it down, really right down, so that the consistency is like dirty water. It's really, really weak. And then I'm just going to put the color in. So I'm just, it's just enough to contaminate the berries. And I'm just going to put it at the base of the berries, just to make it a bit icy looking. Okay. You don't want the colour to be too strong. You may not even be able to see on the camera. This has been a, this is you know looking like anything to you, because it's so pale. But I am, honestly, contaminating these berries very very slightly with the merest tint of colour. You could make them yellow if you wanted to. Okay, tiniest, tiniest little hint. You could perhaps put a little speck of, if you don't have a turquoise colour, just you could use a little 
slight limey, yellowy, greeny colour. Okay, just to go around, just to contaminate them, just the merest smidge. As I say, this, this is so pale, it's almost dirty water. Very, very pale. Okay, so now we are going to paint the bow. So if you ever want to learn how to paint a boo in watercolour, this is a larger design. And we'll be painting this one with a stylized colour. So when I'm drawing up um, a ribbon, or have some ribbon in your sewing box, what we try and do is really emphasise the light and the dark. So for this one, where I'm trying to get it to connect into a dot, I'm having it pinch into a dark point here and then it's twisting over and then this is the twist of it catching the light and then going under. So I'm trying to emphasize it to try and get movement in a ribbon. So for this one here, it's, it's tiny, isn't it? We're only looking at a, a tiny space. So I've actually, on this particular one, made it quite flat and quite generic and dark red and underneath you can see I've painted it white or it looks a paler colour just to show that it's it, it's tying in a bow and the underside sort of catching the light equally you could do it the opposite way around so you could have the ribbon lighter on the top and the underneath because it's in the shadow in theory you could even have these edges that I've done here which are lighter here equally you could have those in a darker red and it would still work the main thing is to have a tonal difference between the two so you don't have a flat looking ribbon so that's why it's dark at the base here and when this ribbon is flicking out it's looking lighter here and then going dark again okay I'm going to go back and cadmium red is what we will be using for our ribbon and we want it nice and strong so it catches the eye and because it's a small ribbon I'm sticking to my small brush and I start at the centre and then I just pull out and pull out while I'm filling out my shape that's it okay and then I just fill in the block Yeah, so we're just completely filling it in, no pre-wetting, and just pull it up as much as you want. Just so you have a nice shape that you're happy with. And now I'm going to go to the other one. Okay. So I tend to pull in to the centre. So just concentrate and get a nice curve. Bring it down. So because this is a tiny little bow, it's fairly flat. But the main thing is to just have a nice, a nice shape pulling down to the centre so you're happy with it. So I am now going to do a little dot in the centre. And I'm leaving a little bit of a gap so we can see where the bow's connecting. And then I'm going to go to underneath and just pulling out and again on this side. So it's almost touching, it's just short of touching. There we go. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm just going to drag it. So I'm just pulling the existing paint that's on, I'm just pulling it. Just a smidge. And again with the other side, I am not just going to pull that down. And let's just have this. There we go. Uh, because it's such a tiny little ribbon, I'm not attempting to do any 
pre-wetting or anything like that. So you don't need to worry about that. Because it's just a tiny area. Main thing to concentrate on is to having a is to have a nice shape for your ribbon. Because it's such a tiny little ribbon. And then we're going to dilute our brush right down so that our consistency of paint is sort of contaminated water. So I'm, I've made this side lighter and I'm just pulling, painting it again. Hang on, let's scoop up some paint. So it's, it's a paler colour. And then on top. There we go. Like that. And there you go. So now that this is um, settling and getting um, bone dry, we can decide if there's any areas that you want to touch up or to say go over. So as you can see for this ribbon here, I did actually outline it in black as well. So that's obviously optional to you. So I can do the same for this one as well. Try not to get my face in the camera. So. Pull this down. I'm trying to use the lightest touch I can possible. And now I am going to go back to my brush and I'm probably going to do a little bit of topping up and strengthening up with the stem. Okay, so I'm just going to press down and flick up like that. And then I'll probably do another one like that. Just to make it a little bit stronger. And we'll just get a little bit more connection going on here. So I'm just going around and seeing which bits I want to perhaps strengthen up a bit. There we are, I think we're nearly there now. 